As humans, we experience challenges every single day. From getting lost on your way home from work, or being caught in the rain without an umbrella, or even more extreme examples, like being in a bad car accident or experiencing a horrible earthquake. Every day, we encounter dangers that could cause us harm. But what I find most interesting is the harm that comes from within, that's written into our DNA and could cause unavoidable disease. Today, I will be exploring one particular disease, Huntington's disease, and its effect on the brain and body. In order to understand Huntington's disease, we need to understand the function of the human genome. Humans, like other living organisms, are made out of cells that have nuclei that house our individual genetic codes in the form of DNA. Each person's DNA is different, and these differences are what makes each of us unique. Through transcription and translation processes, DNA is used to make up the proteins that are necessary for the functionality of our bodies. So how can these different DNA be the cause of our own death? Huntington's disease starts with the HD or HTT gene in chromosome 4 of the human genome. This gene is only comprised of a sequence of CAG trinucleotide repeats. This gene encodes for the Huntington protein. The amount of CAG repeats varies between people and determines how much Huntington protein is synthesized. The more CAG repeats, the more Huntington protein is synthesized. Huntington protein suffocates and kills neurons, predominantly in the basal ganglia area of the brain. The basal ganglia is the part of our brain in charge of movement, motor control, and balance. Loss of basal ganglia function directly leads to various symptoms of Huntington's disease. For example, loss of movement and motor control leads to involuntary jerking movements. Lack of balance leads to impaired posture, and lack of executive function leads to difficulty with speech and swallowing. Studies have shown that an increase in the number of CAG trinucleotide repeats directly correlates to the stage of onset of symptoms. Someone with 36 to 60 repeats is said to have Huntington's disease, and someone with more than 60 repeats is likely to have early onset juvenile Huntington's disease. Studies on juvenile Huntington's disease lead us to believe that it affects the prefrontal cortex more than the basal ganglion. Similarly to regular onset Huntington's disease, functions of the prefrontal cortex directly relate to symptoms of juvenile Huntington's disease. Lack of emotional response function leads to drastic mood changes, and lack of focus leads to lack of behavior management. Like other neurodegenerative diseases, an individual's chance of developing Huntington's disease is predetermined by their genetic makeup. Because there is no cure to this self-destructive disease, we must continue to learn more about the implications of Huntington's disease on the human brain and body with hopes of one day creating a solution.